Hello there YouTube, this is Necrostevo and it's time for week 6 in the GBA Season 9. This week the Victorian Shadows will be taking on the Kansas City Jura Chiefs who of course are coached by none other than the Token Minorities Jolt. So his information will be in the description. And if you don't want to sit through, this is going to be a more brief team builder, and I'll address why uh, my format for these have changed here. But uh, if you don't want to sit through it, there'll be an annotation in the description to jump right into the video. But otherwise, let's get into it. So uh, Jolt, you can kind of see the team that he brought there. I'm just going to briefly go through the Pokemon that I decided to bring for this matchup. Uh, I kind of ended on Choice Scarf Xerneas. That had the potential to at least kind of check some of the other things that he didn't bring. Um, the one notable thing that he didn't bring that I really thought he would bring is Scallopede, and that was also one of his Z users. So uh, several of the sets that I have kind of have that Scallopede in mind, um, just not letting it either set up or letting it get too many um, KOs just by boosting and, and having a life orb and hitting hard. So we have Choice Scarf Xerneas with Moonblast, Psy Shock, Aromatherapy, and Thunder. We have a Substitute Swords Dance, Reckless High Jump Kick Knockoff uh, Mian Xiao. Mian Xiao here is really just going to be present to hopefully set up on some things expecting a high jump kick. Because um, my plan was to play it a little bit more like it were scarfed. And then use those as opportunities or some of those four switches as opportunities to grab a Substitute and then Swords Dance hopefully on a switch. Uh, after that, we have a Life Orb Alakazam here with Psysock, Shadow Ball, Energy Ball, and Thunder Wave. Uh, there are a few things on his team that Alakazam just can't one-hit KO. And also, he has access to Aurora Veil. So, if I needed to either stall that out or hit harder just for things that are available and within chip range, that's what Alakazam is there for. Also for the things that he can't one-shot, they really don't like being paralyzed. So being able to throw that around will be a little bit of nice yellow color in the back there. After that, we have a very defensive Charizard. I have enough speed here to outspeed, um, or rather, I have enough speed here just to, um, let's see. I have enough speed to outspeed at max speed Groudon. And this will also, this defensive investment, allows me to live a plus two earthquake from Scallopede. So a couple things in mind there. I also have Tailwind on this Charizard, just in case uh, I can live a hit, or if he doesn't have a coverage move, but he's in a position to outspeed me, and I can put some of my other Pokemon in a position to outspeed him. Fortress is Akaberry with Spikes, Stealth Rock, Gyro Ball, and Pain Split. With the Akaberry, I figure I can take any fire move from anyone on his team, especially if Groudon is in like adamant max attack. It, I'm expecting him to bring a more bulky Groudon. And then I get an opportunity to Pain Split up, and I really only need one layer of entry hazards here for um, things like my Alakazam and my uh, Xerneas to put in work. And then in the final slot, we have our Tentacruel which is a reflect type haze tentacruel. Um, I just went max speed to tie with Manaphy, uh, but I, I was toying with the idea of putting more defensive investment on there. But max speed here works out just because I don't want Manaphy or um, some type of speedy Mew or something like that to be able to set up on me. Uh, reflect type is really nice because it'll change me into the type of the opponent. And so, for example, if Mew's only coverage is Dark and Psychic, which is decent coverage against my team, that won't work against a Mew, really. Because, uh, um, same thing with kind of Magirna, if he only has a stab as his own typing there, I'm thinking, all right, then I can come in and take those stab type moves. And I don't think he has any reason to run Energy Ball against my team, so I can kind of even Reflect Type on the Mana Fee. And um, Tentacruel, of course, can live an Earthquake from Scallopede as well. So that's kind of the team matchup there. I was really surprised to not see Scallopede on his end. Um, Mega Aerodactyl, Groudon, Magirna, Mana Fee, the Ninetales, and of course the Mew. I was really expecting him to just lead with the Ninetales and put up Aurora Veil immediately and try to set up, because everything that he brought this week could set up and do damage to my team. So I did end up leading with Xerneas upon team preview. I was kind of thinking of using Fortress as a general lead, but he has Mew, which can very easily shut down Fortress, and I really wanted to have that as a 
as a pivot of sorts. That way I could take on something like the Groudon. Uh, just take a fire attack from it and hopefully pain split or kind of hit it. So thank you all for watching the team builder. And thank you all. Uh, thank you, Goldo a Dragon, for recording once again for me. Yet again. That, that gentleman is coming in very clutch. Make sure to go check out his uploads as well. Um, we do see that he leads with Mew. And this is pretty good because a mod that's Moonblast is a two-shot on the Mew. However, I don't know what type of Mew this is, so we're going to swap out here and go into Tentacruel. If he goes for a knockoff, that's annoying, but that's fine. He actually goes for Thunder Wave and misses. Thunder Wave would have been fine too because that doesn't really impact Tentacruel's um, if it had hit. I would have been slower than his walls, but that also means that I can't get burned and whittled. So I would have I would have been okay with that. Uh, Super Fang is a great bring here. It whittles down my fortress a lot, but I also know, hey, Mew has a lot of HP. I likely switch on in Groudon or possibly even Manaphy. They all have great HP stats. So I'm going to get a lot of HP back from something. And so as he sets up his own Stealth Rock, I just go straight for a Pain Split in case he continues going for Super Fang and try to whittle me down. And we get a good amount of damage off on Mew. That at least puts him easily in range if he's more physically defensive, for example, from a Moonblast from Xerneas. Now Groudon comes out and I am looking at my HP level and I'm also looking at, hmm, what is Groudon going to go for? Because Groudon puts me in a few 50-50 situations depending on the coverage move that he has. Number one, Precipice Blades can easily one-shot uh, Charizard after it Mega Evolves, but it cannot one-shot my Fortress. Um, here, I just decided to go for Pain Split, knowing that if he were bulky, I could live the Fire Punch, and this is going to put a lot of damage on him. And I thought for sure he was going to go for a coverage move here, expecting me to swap out into possibly Tentacruel or something like that. Um, but he just keeps on going for Fire Punch, and I even could have gone into my Charizard there. But now, knowing that he is a little bit bulkier, I go into my Life Orb Alakazam, knowing that he's probably not Scarfed, and I can force him out. He goes on into Mew, which takes the Entry Hazard damage, which is perfect because I don't have to go for um, anything other than Energy Ball here. That would have KO'd the Groudon, and that KO's the Mew coming in. So even though Fortress got knocked out there, this puts us in a fantastic position. Now here I was really tempted to stay in and click Thunder Wave. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but I really didn't want to lose Alakazam this early on, and so I end up just staying in, and um, I rather I didn't want to lose it without putting damage on the Aerodactyl, and so I stayed in in case he went for Defog, and he just goes straight for Stone Edge, and I was like, man, I thought he would have wanted to get rid of the Entry Hazards, and so I go out into Mianxiao again to bluff that idea of a Choice Scarf, and he just stays in and goes for Defog, and I was like, really? If I were a Scarf, I would have blown you back. Uh, that was a really, really ballsy play there, and I love it, because I could have definitely hurt him. I do get the chance, though, um, because I was banking on the fact that he didn't have wing attack, I get my substitute up here, and then I can see what he goes for to break my substitute. Uh, he just goes for a taunt, and I was wary of that, which is why I just went straight for high jump kick, because um, he had to have expected either Swords Dancer or Bulk Up or something like that, uh, or even Baton Pass after I went for substitute. And so Taunt works out well for him here because now I'm not in, I can't set up on anything coming in because uh, a Swords Dance would have been great. Now he goes out into his Nine Tails, which is slightly annoying because it negates my Leftovers recovery to get back up to full here. And as he goes for Aurora Veil, I just want to put damage on the Nine Tails so that it's in range of something later on. Uh, I would have loved, I would have loved to have not been taunted here because I would have gone for uh, Swords Dance. Um, immediately. But since I'm not taunted, that also means that I can just get damage on the Nine Tails. And if without Aurora Veil, he probably would have dropped to the high jump kick. He stays in and goes for Freeze Dry to break my substitute, and I'm able to hopefully take this thing out with a high jump kick, and I don't miss. Thank you very much, Mian Xiao. I appreciate you having high accuracy with those knees. Um, so Mian Xiao has picked up two KOs here, which is pretty solid, especially in an Uber's League. I don't think many people would expect me and shot to do much in an Uber's League. Uh, he goes out to uh, Thanos again, which is his Groudon, and he's behind the screen, but I also know mm, I can't really risk the 50-50 of trying to switch into something here, and he goes for Rock Polish, and that was a really, really good play. I decided to go for a substitute here, expecting him to just attack, and that works out well, because now I get to waste another turn of screens. And yes, he's faster, but this means I also get to get off some more chip damage on him. Uh, 
Now the downside to this is I actually switched me and Xiao from Black Belt to Leftovers before the match. And if I had Black Belt, I would have been doing 20% more damage, and that would have really helped out in a few situations here. Uh, number one, that might have been a roll on the Groudon, and then number two, he makes some type of psychic future sight prediction here on my Tentacle swap in. Number one, I didn't go into Tentacle previously, and I thought the switch into Charizard was way more obvious because Precipice Blades has more general coverage against my team. So that's why I thought he would either continue going for Fire Punch or maybe even go for a Rock type move there. Uh, but that was a great call out on his part. Here it was another 50 50. I thought I should go ahead and Mega Evolve because he has seen me play before and he probably knows I'm expecting that Precipice Blade. So maybe go for Stone Edge. But um, that works out well there because I'm just able to go ahead and take out the Groudon thanks to the Sun. That was not any type of roll or anything like that. Man, if he comes in and he goes for Tail Glow. And this is, I I struggle with whether or not this was a misplay or not. Uh, rather, hold on. I know I should have attacked the Manaphy here, in hindsight. Because uh, I just need, I should have just put damage on the Manaphy in order to put it in range. So I wouldn't have been forced to go for Thunder. But I went for Roost thinking that he would either have Calm Mind or he would just go straight for the offensive move. Not knowing how necessarily bulky I was. Uh, but he just gets a free tail glow and he knocks me out with surf after plus three and here I basically put myself in a position of having to hit thunder over and over and over um, that's not terrible because thunder of course has a chance of paralysis and I know I can live a plus three surf just because of calcing beforehand and knowing my own bulk but if I miss then I'm in a pretty nasty position and unfortunately I do miss that thunder um, so that sucks. I really think if I had just gone straight for, even if I had gone for Outrage, Flare Blitz might not have put enough damage on him to put him in room, range of Moonblast. But Outrage would might have even have forced in the uh, Magearna, because Outrage was a roll to kill too, depending on his bulk. Um, and so, that all aside, I do go into me and Shock because he's my last remaining team member here. And I go for High Jump Kick. And basically, I need a critical hit high jump kick on this Magearna to win at this point. Because um, here I go for substitute first, hoping that his only way to hit me is Fleur Cannon. And he goes for shift gear, and I was like, okay, I'm okay with that too. Because now, if his only way of hitting me is Fleur Cannon, I'm behind the sub. And maybe I can even just waste his Fleur Cannon. So, uh, he goes for Iron Head, and I was like, all right, so that means I'm not going to get a chance to attack after this. This has to be the critical hit high jump kick. And me and Shell's already gotten three KOs this match, so here's this last chance effort. No. And it looks like he is within 20% at the very, very end there. And so my decision to switch over to Leftovers before the battle might have bitten me in the butt here. I'm not sure what that roll was without it, because I don't know his set. But I do know that that was a very, very close battle and a very fun one at that. Uh, so thank you very much, TTM Jolt, for the battle. Thank you all for watching. Uh, another loss here. This one, though, like after a battle like that, I just feel really good. Like that call out on Tentacruel. And I didn't get to use Tentacruel at all, even though I made the cool set for it. And I bred a brand new Tentacruel with Haze and everything. I just got it blown up by a Groudon. But that's okay. It's not really okay. I'm pretty salty about it. But, that's how it is sometimes. Thank you all so much for watching. I do want to um, just address why my format for these have changed. I'm in the midst of moving, which is why I haven't been able to put the things at the front of the video. But I did want to take the same amount of time I did editing and kind of remastering the audio and making sure that things are flowing smoothly. So that's why you don't have the same team builder in the front. But that is also why I'm able to still get the battle videos up because I don't spend um, the time on the team builder. So if that just really rustles your jellies, let me know and I will do my best in the midst of moving to put up the team builder in the front again on the next upload. If it doesn't bother you, I appreciate your flexibility and I will see you in the next battle of week seven in the GBA. Expect it, go outside, take a walk, come back inside, watch the video smash the like button as they say enjoy your time guys i'll talk to you later